Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up, what's up, what's up? Winning Cures Everything College Football Big Game Previews for week number eight. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. Boy, have we got a lot to discuss this evening. Let's uh, let's go on and fire in. Of course, you can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. You can find the football picks contest over on that website, winningcureseverything.com. It's right there in the navigation bar. Go check it out. It's free to enter every week. You win cool prizes from Tunica, Mississippi, who also sponsors the show. Of course, you can see right behind us, right here, uh, Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's Incredible sports books. That's right. That's right. I'm pretty good at the counting thing. Believe that. Uh, South Premier Sports Gambling Destination. Six incredible sports books. Tunicatravel.com is the website to find out more information on that. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Share out the show. Tell everybody you know about it. Tell the people that you don't know about it. Uh, leave some comments for us. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what we got right, what we got wrong. Here lately, there's been a lot wrong. That's okay. It's fine. We're having fun with it. This is one crazy, insane, stupid-ass sport, and we love every minute of it. God bless America. Let's jump in. Are you ready? Here's where we are going first. Michigan going to Happy Valley, a 6.30 p.m. game in Beaver Stadium. It's on ABC. Penn State, an eight-and-a-half point favorite. The total is 45-and-a-half. The over has hit the last five times that they've played. I was just about to say, I would bet this would be more higher scoring. The home team has won in blowout fashion the last three years. Yes, sir. Michigan, one and four against the spread and straight up the last five trips to Happy Valley. Michigan is number 71 in turnover margin. <coughs> Penn State is number 31 in turnover margin. Let me give you some numbers. You ready for some numbers? Come on. Penn State rushing offense, number 56 in the country. Michigan's rushing defense is number 31. Penn State's passing offense is number 45 in the country. Michigan's passing defense is number seven. The biggest differential right there, Michigan's pass defense is pretty damn good. On the other side, Michigan's rushing offense, number 66 in the country. Penn State's rushing defense is number three in the country. So there is the biggest differential on that side. Michigan's passing offense, slightly worse than the rushing offense, which means they can't really do either. Number 67 passing offense in the country against Penn State's number 57 passing defense. Uh, you would look at these stats and think there is no way that one of these teams is going to blow out the other one. And yet recent history would tell you that's just not true. James Franklin, in these kind of revenge spots, loves to take it out on, on people. Yeah, if he, can, if he can run it up, he will. He most certainly will. They, they will not. The atmosphere not is going to be out because he just chooses not to. Right. If they the, if they have the ability to, they will. The atmosphere is going to be insane. College game day will be there. Barstool Sports will be there. It's going to be absolutely bananas. I can't wait to watch it. Uh, you want to make some picks on this? Yeah. Let's make some picks. Hey, you, first off, you got any opinions on this? No, I mean, I'm excited to watch this game. I, I think this Michigan team, after their bye week, after the beatdown that they took from Wisconsin, they got better. I mean, they, they have been better. Now, I know they haven't played a whole lot of, you know, competition, but yeah. they both have the same common opponent in Iowa. Okay. And they, they kind of kicked the crap out of Iowa. And that, Well, they didn't score a bunch of them, but neither one of them scored a bunch of them. I'm about to say Penn State didn't score a bunch on them either. Yeah. So, so I, I, I think that, you know, I, I felt – I feel like this Michigan team is just a better team than they were the first couple of games of the season. And if you're judging them based on the first three games of the season, then I think you're being narrow-minded and short-sighted. I think yeah. you have to look at their entire resume right now and see that they are a team that is up and is down, and I think they're going to be up. I think they're playing better. I actually like Michigan in this game. I think they have a good chance to win the game. I definitely think they will cover the number. I like, I like Michigan. I'm going the opposite way. Are you taking Michigan to win? I'll take Michigan to win. All right, so win and I know cover. that that probably won't happen. Uh, I'm going the complete opposite direction on this. Okay. Uh, I think Penn State has figured something out, and 
I think they're going to use this as a showcase. I think part of what went down in Kinnick last week, I think the touchdown that was called off the board should have absolutely stayed. They should have beaten them by worse than they did. And I think in this spot, James Franklin and that team lives for these kind of moments. I'm all over it. Penn State minus eight and a half for me. You're taking Michigan plus eight and a half. Let's jump into the next one. Arizona State at Utah. 5 p.m. on the Pac-12 Network. Now, how this ended up on the Pac-12 Network, there are a ton of articles out there. But, geez, what are you doing, Larry Scott? Good gracious. It just, just ridiculous. Uh, your best game of the weekend. And nobody gets to see it. Nobody gets to see it. And now, obviously, you can say Oregon-Washington. Pretty good game. I still think this, I mean, this is for the Pac-12 South here. Like, yeah, I think so, too. Just ridiculous. Rice Eccles Stadium in Salt Lake City, Utah. The total is 48 and a half, which seemed a little high for these teams. Um, you, you do, as a network, get to play more than one game on a Saturday, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's true. You don't just have to say, well, well, multiple of our games are on TV. That's okay. Yeah. Utah is a 13 and a half point favorite here. 14 point, whatever it is. Arizona State, 4-1 and one against the spread the last five games on the road. Arizona State has seven losses under Herm Edwards. Six of them were by seven points or less. One of them was by 11 points. That was in the bowl game against Fresno State last year. Arizona State beat Utah 38-20 to 20 last year. Utah, number seven in turnover margin. Arizona State, number 43. Now, let's do, let's do some, some uh, uh, what's the word? Not differential. Let's uh, let's compare. Okay. Let's compare. All right. Utah, number 20 rushing offense against Arizona State's number 15 rushing defense. Kind of a toss-up, right? Okay. Utah, number 76 passing offense against Arizona State's number 92 passing defense. Eh, toss-up, whatever. Like, once you get into those higher numbers, it's just kind of whatever. Arizona State, number 80 rushing offense against Utah, number 5 rushing defense. That is a big disparity. Arizona State number 44 passing offense against Utah's number 82 passing defense. That's a pretty big disparity as well. So, Arizona State probably not going to be able to run the football. These stats only make sense if they played the same teams. Agreed. Okay. I think if Utah had played Michigan State at Michigan State, their, their, their rush against defense wouldn't be that great. Or the whatever the number is, they wouldn't have ran the ball on Utah, on, uh, on Michigan State. Because Same way Arizona State did. That's right. Yeah. Arizona State, that killed their rushing numbers. Yeah, One you, game crushed them. I you got a point. I think they would have crushed Utah's numbers also. You got a point. Arizona State has also played Cal, uh, has so, also played – Substantially yeah. better defense than anybody Utah's played as well. You got that right. So, so um, I do like Arizona State in this spot. I do not like Arizona State to win – uh, I think Utah at home finds a way to get this done. Um, and I'm going to go just like all the other losses that Herm has had. They'll lose by seven. Like, I think they lose at seven or all, by seven on the road at the last minute. Utah finds a way to keep this thing going. Utah, remember, my playoff pick. I don't think they're going to get there. But I do like them to win the Pac-12 South still. It, it, Kyle Whittingham and this bunch, that defensive line is still nasty. And they're going up against a freshman quarterback. I've talked about this a lot. Even though Jaden Daniels is an absolute baller, he is a stud quarterback. Uh, he has been known to make some mistakes here and there. And I think that this is one of those times where he will make a mistake that will cost the team the ball game. And I like Utah. Even without, even without Moss. Even without the running back. I think they're going to be fine. Uh, this is a revenge spot for them. Give me Arizona State plus the 13 and a half or plus the 14. Um, give me Utah to win. Who do you like? I'll take Arizona State to cover. I'll take Arizona State to win. Oh, you going to all over? Okay, okay. I forget you got some of that money line action too. <laughs> it's the Pac-12, man. Nobody knows what the hell is going on, man. Uh, no, you're right about that. You are 100% right about that. Let's jump in the next one. Pac-12 again. Oregon. Going to Seattle, Washington is a three-point underdog at home. Washington, 19-1 and one straight up their last 20 at home. Uh, they're 4-1 and one against the spread in their last five at home. Oregon won this game 30-27 to 27 in overtime last year in Eugene. 
This one, however, at Husky Stadium in Seattle, 2.30 p.m. ABC kickoff. That is what, 12.30 local? Kind of right. early. Kind of early out there. 50 and a half is the total. Uh, turnover margin per game, Oregon number four, Washington number 14. Both of these teams like to hold on to the football. They are, uh, they are very careful with the ball. They don't give it up very often. Uh, as far as the comparative stats... The only big time thing here is that Oregon is just about better everywhere. Like all of their stats are crazy. Oregon number 33 rushing defense, number 3 passing defense. Washington number 47 rushing offense, number 75 passing offense. You got to side with Oregon on that one. Um on this uh, on the other side, Oregon number 61 rushing offense. They they hadn't been running the ball real well, but Washington's only the number 58 rushing defense. Oregon, number 27 passing offense against Washington, the number 55 passing defense. That's a problem because Oregon has able to or has been able to put up these numbers with just, like, guys off the couch. That's right. Like, they, they've been pulling DBs over to be wide receivers. They've been pulling offensive linemen or whoever to be wide receivers. And Herbert's been able to get them open, and they've been able to put up numbers. Washington, can you – Tell me anything that's going on with this team. No, I have no clue. I know this. I trust Chris Peterson. I think I think this is a very inconsistent football team. But I never worry about inconsistencies when it's a big game. And then yeah. when it's a home game, I think you're going to get Washington's best against Oregon's best. Yeah. And and that's why I think that we're, we're looking at this game a little bit different. Because Oregon has beat the crap out of everybody they have played, not named all. Yeah. They they haven't been in any close games. They've beat up on everyone. And Washington has a couple losses now to what we would deem to be far imper- inferior teams. Yeah, Cal um, and a, a really beat up Stanford. Yeah. So I, I just don't know. I don't know that we're seeing Washington in the same light. But if you're telling me Washington at their very best and they're giving it all they got, they got the best week of practice they're going to have. This is the biggest opponent they're going to play all year. At home, in their house, I think they're going to bring all they have. And with Oregon, it's got to matter because they're out of mulligans. Yeah, if you're they, right about that. If they want to win the Pac-12, they, they need to win this game. No, now, I know they still that. have a game up because Washington's lost two Pac-12 games. But right now, they're yeah. still in... With chaos and help, they're still in the conversation for the playoff. Thank you. Right about that. Um, I'm a, I'm assuming you're taking Washington. To win. I am going to take Washington to win and cover. I uh, man, I got to tell you, I I really, I kind of wanted to go that way. I'm gonna go the other way though. I I think that I think this is a, a different Oregon team. I, I like Mario Cristobal. I like what he's doing. Avalos, the defensive coordinator, like this is this team is on a mission. I like them a lot. I, I'm going to take Oregon minus three here. Um, I don't love it though. It ain't one of my gambling picks by any stretch of the imagination. But it is going to be a lot of fun to watch. No, it's going to be fun to watch. I'm going to be I'm going to be watching a lot of this game. That's you got that right. Well, you and I both will be watching a lot of it at whatever sports bar we go to in Chicago. Well, if we can find it. Oh, we're going to – dude, we'll find a Hooters. We'll find, we'll, we'll find somewhere. I'm way too high maintenance to go to Hooters. No, I believe that. We, we're going to go to a, uh, a pizza place and get that thing on. All right, game number four, Temple at SMU. Now, of course, we do our five biggest games. Now, you could throw in all kind of big games here. You could throw in Iowa State, Texas Tech, Baylor, Oklahoma State, Florida, South Carolina, LSU, Mississippi, whatever. You could toss these up there. We think these are the five best games of the weekend. Temple going to SMU. This is where college game day maybe should have been. I think. I, I think the Baylor-Oklahoma State game is bigger than this, but that's different. Well. I I like, but I'm, I'm in support of this. I'm not, I don't disagree yeah. with this at all. Temple, I like more American. There you go. Temple at SMU. SMU undefeated. Coming off a of bye week, Temple had a rough stretch of it with Memphis last week. Got the win, though. That's right. SMU minus seven and a half. The total is 59. It's at 2.30 p.m. on ESPN2 from Gerald J. Ford Stadium in Dallas, Texas. Temple. 
10 and 4 against the spread in their last 14 on the road, but they are averaging minus one point against the spread average this season. SMU averaging plus 11 against the spread this season. SMU has been outperforming everything. Everybody. Uh, other than that last second miraculous whatever comeback against Tulsa. Everything else, they have been smoking them down. Everybody thinks of SMU as only offense. That is not the case. Number 32 run defense this year against uh, Temple's number 62 rushing offense. Look, SMU, number 19 in the country in passing offense. Temple, pretty good against that. Number 35 passing defense. However, SMU, number 25 rushing offense. You realize that? Uh, that doesn't surprise me. Number 25 rushing offense, Temple, number 52 rushing defense. Now, here is what, what is surprising, right? I just told you, SMU number 32 rushing defense against Temple number 62 rushing offense. SMU number 91 passing defense against Temple number 67 passing offense. All of the, the numbers lean SMU here, SMU at home, big time game, still undefeated, got their scare out of the way. I think if this was at Temple, it might be a little I'd different. A little different. Um, but Temple coming off of a just a big time win against Memphis. Came down to the wire, had to put everything they had into that one to get that win. Uh, I'm going to roll SMU minus the seven and a half here. I I like what Sonny Dykes is doing there. I agree. Uh, I mean, good gracious. I, I like SMU as well. The, uh, I mean, Bichelle has just been yeah. no, a, they're a game changer for and, and Temple is coming off a big, big win. I think they're due to take a step backwards. And they got to go on the road to do it. Yep, they certainly do. All right, game number five. Let's move into the Liberty Bowl. Tulane at Memphis. Memphis, a four. Two point American fan. teams, two American games this year, this week. You best believe that. Total is 59 and a half, 6 p.m. ESPN2 is a night game. In Liberty Bowl Memorial <clears throat> Stadium here in Memphis, Tennessee, Tulane, six and one against the spread in their last seven games. They beat the absolute crap out of Memphis last year. 40 to 24. Memphis 8 and 2 against the spread. Their last 10 as a home favorite. Tulane is 2 and 6. Their last 8 as a road dog. Turnover margin per game. Turnovers are a big, big part of games. It cost Memphis the game at Temple last week. They turned the ball over four times. They lost the game by two points. And look, you just don't give it up one less time, and, and you would have been, you probably would have been fine. Probably would have been fine because they were moving the ball that well. Turnover margin. Per game, Tulane is number 38 in the country. Memphis is number 82. 82. Uh, if you look at these stats, other than the fact that Memphis is at home, I cannot find a reason why Memphis should be favored in this game. I cannot either. Uh, Memphis, number 26 rushing offense against Tulane, number 65 rushing defense. That's pretty big discrepancy there. Memphis, number 65 passing offense. Tulane is the number 23 passing defense in the country. Now, granted, they have played Army, so that helped a little bit. It pulls those numbers down. This, yep. this but even still, are just, okay. even still, you have played Houston. You have played, you know, some, some pretty big teams. Tulane has the number four rushing offense in the country. Number four. Surprise me. Memphis's rushing defense, after starting out the season looking so good, every, this defense was fantastic. Da, 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 da. Number 84 rushing defense. That's some, that's some bad juju. It doesn't exactly uh, bode well for the future here. Tulane, number 89 passing offense. That's not surprising. Memphis's passing defense is number 15. But that's not going to matter because Tulane is not going to throw the ball a whole lot. So, I'm going to take Tulane plus the four here. And I... I'm going to take Memphis to, to win the game. I think this is a field goal game right down to the wire. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I really hate picking against Memphis. I thought Memphis could be one of the teams to go 12-0 this year. They lost that last week. Yep. I think they could lose two in a row. You going two lanes straight up? I think I am. Willie Fritz, boy. I think I, I really think I am. Hey, Interesting, <clears throat> interesting thought. Tulane's definitely going to be one a money line play that I do for sure. If Joe Moorhead were to leave for Rutgers, now this was brought up. You remember me bringing up Tom Fornelli and them talking about all these different scenarios and da 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 da. Take Joe Moorhead to Rutgers, 
take Willie Fritz to Mississippi State. What makes you think Mississippi State is capable of making a small time? Because their process was mm. so great the last time. No, 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 no. Uh, I know that. I know that that's going to piss off every Mississippi State friend I have. That's okay, and that's fine. But but I'm going to tell you this: they interviewed Pruitt and offered him the job. He yeah. said no. He's been a disaster. So you almost landed Pruitt. You interviewed Ryan Day. I don't know why. They could have interviewed Bill Belichick. He ain't taking the job either, he ain't taking by the, the job. way. So um, that didn't work out. And then you interview Moorhead and offer him the job. I, I just don't know. That they, I don't know that they have a process that I trust. I think that their process was incredibly flawed last time, and maybe they would be smart and change it up a little bit this time. What if both Mississippi jobs come open? Uh, if that happens... And both of them are offered. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. As well as Ole Miss is playing right now, that one ain't coming open yet. I don't think it is. They still got to hire an AD. Like they, there, there's things going on behind the scenes there. Uh, but, man, I'd love to see Willie Fritz at any one of those places. I don't I don't hate it. It, like, it just I just don't trust Mississippi State. I follow processes more than I follow outcomes. Yeah. If, if you make a... If you don't, if Moorhead would have turned into the next Bear Bryant of football, it, your your process was still heavily flawed. You just got lucky, and I don't like luck. I want there to be some type of structure and process, some type of logic and reasoning behind how and how, why you you came up with the the thing you came up with. You had a list of seven people. You went down that list and started interviewing people, and then offering them a job. And yeah. then interviewing them and offering them the job. And interviewing them and offering them the job. That is not a process of hiring people. No, you're right. You're right. All right. Are you ready? Let's jump into uh, rapid fire. Oh, yeah. I thought we were done. No, nope. forgot rapid about fire. rapid fire. That's no, all good. You and I will be at this game. Friday night, Ohio State at Northwestern. We're going to be in Evanston, Illinois. It's going to be pretty good weather. Feeling pretty good. God, I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. Northwestern. It's chilly for my liking, but it's, I, I'll handle it. 28 and a half point dog. It's 28, but that's okay. You that's, might be able to find that half point. Somewhere. Well, when I got the uh, when I saw it earlier, I, I got that's the half okay. point earlier. I went ahead and took Northwestern plus 28 and a half. Uh, Ohio State's got Wisconsin coming up next week. Like, I think this is just a get in, get a win, get out of town kind of game for Ohio State. And if they screw around, Northwestern has been known. Yeah. To get some of these kind of games. I don't know if they get this one, though. This Ohio State team is for real. I am excited to be able to see Justin Fields and that bunch in person. Yeah, I am, too. Very um, looking forward to it. But, uh, but yeah, we're going to have fun with the Westlot Pirates boys. Go check out their podcast, of course. Apple Podcasts, Google gonna, Podcasts, Spotify, gonna, whatever. Going to have some money lying on this one. Yeah. This is, uh, what is it, plus 2500 That's 2500 So, if you put $25 on $25 it. $25 down. You win, what was that? What a six hundred twenty five. Yeah, six twenty five. So just saying. No. I've spent twenty five dollars on worse. I have spent it on way worse. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it this weekend. And I have I'm lost saying. a lot I know. of money this year yeah. gambling. So That's what's it. another twenty five dollars? Screw it, it's just too. money. That's the way it goes. Um uh, I mean to be fair, Ohio State probably probably handles this fairly easily. Okay. Maybe. I mean, maybe, maybe not. That's why maybe. they play the game. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Next up, Duke at Virginia. David Cutcliffe against Bronco Mendenhall. A battle of really good old school coaches that know how to yeah. get this thing done. Uh, this one is over on the Gambling Picks uh, show. I like David Cutcliffe in this spot. He's thirteen and three against the spread. Twelve and four straight up as an underdog of less than seven points in his career at Duke. Um, however, Virginia has won four straight in this series. And they have been smoking Duke every year. I know we're supposed reason. to go fast on these. I gotta, I gotta ask because it's gonna drive me crazy if I don't. All right. Does his record get worse if he's a bigger underdog? He doesn't cover them more. Why does this underdog of seven points or less? Fantastic like, question. Like, does that That's matter it. at well, all? Well, so so his record as an underdog or his record not as an underdog? No, no, no. But so like against Clemson, he didn't cover like twenty seven last year. Against Alabama, he didn't cover thirty five earlier this year. Okay. But a lot of that has to do with, like, there's such a talent discrepancy in that spot. But when you get him with with This is why I don't like your trends, talent. because you can make them say anything you want to make them say, though. Well, well, I, mean, I love Duke. Do. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not knocking your stuff here. 
But if you if you, you gotta admit made, that's a pretty big sample size. If you've all, but it's a weird number. They just like it's seven points or less. They they do this. And that's about less than a touchdown. Yeah, but that doesn't. That's a you you just don't like numbers. That's but already. that that doesn't make sense though, Gary. It just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, hold on, hold on. In thirty games, the la- well, yeah, let's let's do thirty games anywhere as an underdog. I mean, you know, you no can, matter they're, what, they're at home, right? Are they at home or are they on the road? They're uh, they're on the road. Right, you can do it at the road. I mean, you can put in the the information. That's fine, but all right, let's do on and the I'm road. Sure it's good because he's good against the spread. Let's do the last twenty. Duke last twenty on the road as an underdog. in the regular season as an underdog. Just any number. They are 14 and 6 against the spread. He That's has good. covered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 in a row I, as I an underdog. Think, I think that number is just as good as the number you gave out, but it's not as confusing or make you feel like you're being tricked into something. I feel like when you do the 7 or less thing or the, you know, however you word it, I feel like you're selling me something that I don't want to be sold and and you're just trying to give me information that I don't really know. I'm sure the information you're giving is true. That makes but, sense. But why did you stop it at this number? Why did you why did you put it at these parameters? 14 to 6 is a hell of a number. Yeah. 14 to 6 is a hell of a number. Anyway, I, I apologize. No, no, no. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, it, did, for somebody who doesn't, this is why I don't like numbers, because I fully believe I can make every stat say whatever I want. I could pick any team, any side, and I can find stats to back it up. Let's see. Duke. Da, 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 uh, that didn't change over. Well, fifteen and five Dorn. against the spread as an underdog. That's great. Home or away. That's a that's a great number. Yeah, that's a gr- that's a great number. Pretty good. Don't, don't, and and don't one ten of them out right. Yeah. No, that's perfect. You're great. So, Your logic is is as solid as solid can be. I I just felt like I was being duped into something when you when you give the extra caveats. I oh, like of less than a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, to be, that, that's fair. Okay. It, it, for somebody who doesn't know all the numbers, I just felt like I was being tricked. No, no, no. But, but I wasn't tricked at all. No, he, so he's great. just he's just really good as an underdog. He's just great as an underdog. Yeah. And I it's, knew that was going to be true. I just didn't know what those numbers were going to be. It's a, keeping out games like Alabama, games like uh, Clemson, That's just part whatever. of it, though. I mean, this is, this is part of it. You know that your Clemson's on the schedule. They're in your conference. That's true. Like, so you know he's going to have some of these games against them. So if you can't figure out, oh, he lost this one game the last three years, oh, but it's to the same team, oh, and that team competed for the national championship, yeah, we kind of get that. Yeah. How's he do against everybody else? Okay, take through three losses out. He did great. That's, like, I think we're smarter to figure that out. Okay, makes sense. You're good, though. Next up, logic Baylor. Solid. I like solid logic. There you go. Baylor at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. Going to be the best game of the weekend. A three-point favorite for the Cowboys. Now, Baylor is undefeated, coming off a two-overtime win at home against Texas Tech. Man, like, I love the Bears, but I also am, am thinking, like, that Gundy Baylor defense. With two, Gundy with two weeks to prepare. This is going to be an incredible football. I'm just I telling you. I, I, I can't predict the future, but could it be better at this? This is going to be the best game of the weekend. Just, I, you I'm know, like, I told you, like, about them saying that um, – I like Tom Fornelli and whoever else saying James Franklin being head coach at Alabama after Saban leaves. I'd rather have Matt Rule. If if no no that ain't happening that wi- that will not happen. That will mark my words. That will never ever ever happen. Why is that? It just I, I won't allow it. <laughs> I just won't allow it. Are you? Uh, would you be mad? Like would you? Uh, no, no, not mad is not a a word appropriate. <laughs> For that, <laughs> and it won't happen. Gary. It's just not going to happen. You may be right. You may be no, right. No, you can have Franklin. It's fine. That doesn't set me on fire. That Matt, we have problems. There will be consequences. <laughs> uh, Baylor has got a fantastic football team. Uh, Charlie Brewer, if he throws three picks in this game, I guarantee you that they will lose the football game. But he won't because this is not. I don't a, think he will. Not the defense that that he played. No, I agree. No, this I is agree. different. Uh, this will be a different style game as that last one. Oh, yeah, this, oh, there's so, going to be some points in this. So, Oh, my gosh. There's going to be some points, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Gundy, two weeks to prepare. All right, let's roll. Who we got next? Columbia, South Carolina. 
Will Muschamp, 2-0 and since he started wearing the reading glasses. I'm just hey, saying. Got, hey, his wife gave him a little attention last week. Maybe he might not be as fired up as he is normally. So, hey, we're just saying. We're just saying. Florida. I didn't like losing. Florida goes from Death Valley over to the the Gamecock caboose. They are they are going over into the hen house. They're going to Sandstorm. South Carolina coming off a massive, massive win. On the road, they get to come home. Man, that crowd is going to be ruckus. They're going to be feeling themselves. You know what I was surprised about? And Ryan Helensky got, you know, kind of two bum legs, you know? <laughs> I was about to say, I don't know who's going to be the quarterback. Like, I, I got no idea. Team. And Florida is only a five-point favorite. Yes. Now, Florida has gone through a gauntlet here I, recently. I, I completely agree. So, the fact that this game is on the road, that's kind of tough. But, man, it, Florida's got to win this football game, right? I, I think so. I, I just feel like South Carolina is just going to be riding high. They want to be close. They, they want to win the game. Don't get me wrong. They want to win the game. Can they? And then I, you know how I feel. I like, I actually like betting teams. Talk about this all the time. Where one team had just a hellacious loss. Whole country saw it. Looked bad. The other team had the biggest win of the weekend. And now those two teams play each other. Yeah. And I like taking the team that lost. Yeah. Now, it is rare that I'll ever take Florida. So I ain't going to. And you know how much I love. <laughs> so South, I ain't gonna. You know how much I love South Carolina. So I'm and definitely South, not South Carolina, in this game. South, South Carolina gets them another, uh, you know, another top ten or whatever opponent this time at home at 11 a.m. I have no idea who's gonna play quarterback for South Carolina. Me either. I got no. I got clue. no clue. I got no clue what this offense is gonna look like, Gary. How they beat Georgia, and they beat the hell out of them. You know, and so if you look at SP Plus. Their win expectancy was only eight percent. That doesn't surprise me. Like they, at all. they, we can say that they beat the hell out of them, but Georgia still had five hundred plus yards of total offense. Uh, well, they the reason a DB that they beat the hell out of them shut down the entire right side of the offense. Yeah, they, they really did. They throw, held them to four. You couldn't four yards throw to the right, and you couldn't run to the right. Yeah, they, you have when you have a secondary player, an individual player. You know, we used to give Revis credit for this. We've given Nandi Asamoah. Couple of DBs in the NFL we talk about Patrick Peterson, who's been able to shut down an entire side of the football game. It's rare that you see that in college, but that man did it. Oh, he he certainly did. He he took away the entire right side of the game, and every time Kirby kept going back to it. Boy, that man's so dumb. He most certainly is. He's a hell of a coach. He's a hell of a recruiter. But you give him a test, and on test time, that man's going to fail that test. <laughs> I bet he wasn't a good test taker when he was at Georgia. He probably wasn't. I could be wrong. He's a damn genius. <laughs> I may be wrong. All right, uh, let's jump in. Last two, Iowa State at Texas Tech. You and I going head-to-head in our betting picks on this one. I couldn't believe that. I, it shocked me. That I thought for certain we were going the same one. It's I nope. thought for certain we were going the same one. And there's one. no chance. No chance. I thought I, I thought Texas Tech put everything they had into that game last week. Uh, I think Iowa State no. is really, really good. Give me a crushing loss. And big win. And that, that's that's give totally the, fine. Give me the team that lost. Except for the fact that it is freaking Brocktober oh right now. God. That's all I'm saying. It's Brocktober. Iowa State, Matt Campbell and these boys, they are they are fired up. This team's good enough to make it to the Big Twelve title game. I think they could beat Oklahoma and Texas. I think they're going to smoke some people. And then Iowa State's going to look unbelievable. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Brock Purdy got them rolling. Texas Tech. Nope, 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 nope. Tyler Boyd, baby. That's, <laughs> that was in September. Okay. It's a big difference. It wasn't Brocktober yet. <laughs> All right, last game. Last game. Your... LSU Bayou Bengal Tigers going on the road to Starkville, a place where they lost 37 to 7 two years ago. I don't know about that. They got to bring up old stuff for me. Well, I'm just saying, it's, you know, it, going back to Starkville, 230 CBS game, and LSU is a 19 point favorite. 
Now I want you to explain something to me. Okay. Why are the analytics not catching up to LSU yet? I don't, I don't, I'm not an analytics guy, so I don't, I don't I know. I cannot figure this out. I know this. Let me tell you the numbers. The analytics have got LSU as like a 12-and-a-half point favorite here. I mean, let, me, let, me, let me tell you what happened against one of the best defenses in the country. I'm yeah. talking top four, top five defense. You take away the kneel downs, the yards per play were over 11 yards per play. It yeah. was like 11.4, something like that. Yeah. Yards per play. That's insane. Oh, it's, it's absolutely they, that. They didn't have – a really good third down percentage. They only had four third downs. Yeah, the entire game. They, they were one out of four, but they only had so, four. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're only twenty five percent against third downs. Third down matters. I, wait, not if you don't have third downs. Not, and yeah, don't. not, not if you don't get into third. This down. team just puts up points against that. And that's that's a big boy defense. No, absolutely. That, that is is not is not who we bring in. Utah State. Okay, that's. Not Texas, even who's struggling to stop people. And it's definitely not Mississippi State. And it is not Mississippi State. I mean, Mississippi State. It is not a Joe Moore head coach football team. No. I'm going to tell you that right now. I am I'm debating whether or not to uh, lay all those points. Yeah. I really so think I'm on. Let me, let me tell you the only reason I didn't have them in my picks big, big win. Maybe the worst loss. No, that's Do, 100% right. What's the worst loss? Georgia losing at home to a rival in South Carolina. Coach Boom, tough, hard nosed team. Or Mississippi State going to Knoxville and losing. Oh, I, I think I think going to Knoxville. I think I think the loss think of Knoxville, Knoxville is nationwide. Everybody's like, you know, this team lost to like Georgia Southern, right? A George, no, even so, worse than that. So Georgia, I always Georgia get, State. Listen, I know there's like nine Georgia schools Southern is in Georgia. Good. I know, and I knew I was going to say the wrong one. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> It's like a South Georgia, it's Georgia Southern, Georgia State. And I, and they get them all confused. But yeah, you know they lost to them, right? And they, oh, get, yeah. they got a W against the U. That's terrible. That's so bad. I just like to poke my state fans. That is that's like, so I bad. I like them. All right, that's going to wrap it up. That is college football week eight previews and picks. Of course, you can find out more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. You can get all of our videos or previews or picks. You can go to our Gambling Picks page and see everything that we've done for the last four football seasons. Uh, you can see my college basketball picks for this year, see what we've done on that, you know, all, all sorts of different stuff. So go over, winningcureseverything.com. Our social media feed is over there. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button for us. Leave us some comments. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what your picks are this week, who's good, what news we should talk about, et cetera, et cetera. And the show is always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Chris, anything else that we need to chat on this week? No, sir. Not a thing. You guys have been wonderful. Hit that subscribe button for us. If you're on Apple Podcasts, leave us a nice review. We'll read it out for you. I promise. If you, uh, if you wanted to hear this week's reviews, go over to the College Football Gambling Show. We, we did them up on there. It was good stuff. People, people told you, go against me, and I cannot disagree right now. So, but go check that stuff out. We'll see you guys again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.